80 years ago, Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin deported the ethnic Koreans living in Russia's Far East to Kazakhstan. And to this day, there are still around 100,000 of them living there, many of them having become very successful. Our Kim Hye-sung is in the commercial capital of Kazakhstan, Almaty, where she met two of them, hoping to build bridges between their ancestral homeland, Korea, and the country where they were born. Bronislav Shin is busy working as chairman of Almaty Inzestory, one of the top 50 companies in Kazakhstan. Medals and awards are testament to his success as he built major roads and buildings across the country. But it was not an easy path for Shin. I was born and raised in Atrao, a rural part of the country, when my parents were forced to relocate there under Stalin. My siblings and I didn't even have shoes to wear back then. We were poor. It was only after the collapse of the Soviet Union that he had the opportunity to work as a construction worker, then senior manager and finally chairman. Around 170,000 Koryaen or ethnic Koreans were deported from the Russian Far East under Stalin in 1937, and many of them died due to starvation and cold weather. As of 2017, around 100,000 Koryaeans live in Kazakhstan and are considered one of the most successful and respected ethnic minorities out of the 130 in the country. With diligence and persistence, not only have many Kazakh Koreans become successful in business, they're also using their skills to get involved in academia, culture, and even politics here in Kazakhstan. Roman Kim is the deputy of the Mazhili's lower house of the Kazakhstani parliament. My dad passed away when I was 10. My mom raised me and always told me to study hard. The Korean Association of Kazakhstan encouraged me to move to Astana and work for the public service. And now, I'm serving as the president of the association. We provide Korean language programs and hold various business networking forums. Both Shin and Kim say they are grateful to Kazakhstan for helping them adapt to society, but they also long for their roots, which prompted Shin to found an organization to preserve Korean culture and heritage in Kazakhstan. Unfortunately, due to Stalin's nationalities policy, I can only speak Russian. I was forced to forget my identity as a Korean, but I hope the current and future generations can know the true Korea and work as cultural bridges between Korea and Kazakhstan. My grandson is now in a Korean university. He can speak Korean. Born as Koreans, die as Koreans. I'm a Kazakh, but still. I'm proud of my Korean heritage. Kim Hye-sung, Arirang News, IMRT.